the Business Channel for business class programming. The role of our organisation, SIBSI, is to, is to ensure that the future is a low carbon future and to help government and guide policy development so that this is more likely. And then it's to deliver technical guidance and certification of people capable of delivering those things. We've probably got about 20,000 members worldwide, scattered over 120 countries. Those are mostly in the UK, so something like 75-80% are in the UK. But this problem is a worldwide problem and our engineers are everywhere. In terms of building the low carbon economy, we have been set challenges by the government and by the European Union to slash carbon intensity by 80% by 2050 and to deliver zero carbon new buildings uh, by 2019. Now nobody's ever built a zero carbon building, or arguably they claim they have, but effectively no new buildings are yet zero carbon. So now we as an organisation have to help our members learn from each other how are they going to do that so that all new buildings can be zero carbon and then we have to understand how the whole of society can change all its building stock so it remains low carbon. There are approximately 26 million buildings existing in the UK. The rate of replacement of those buildings means that we could replace the whole lot in about 400 years. We have to reduce the carbon impact of those buildings by at least 80% by 2050, which means refurbishing one a minute. We can help people reduce and manage their carbon emissions by first of all ensuring they understand how to measure them correctly. And display energy certificates are an excellent way of doing that. Uh, that allows you to see where you're actually using your energy in a building and to then analyse it, which we can help our members do. We publish guidance documentation, the technical memorandum 46, is display energy certificates. That guides people as to what the benchmarks they're trying to work around are. So for instance, if their building is way over a benchmark, as there was a building I think in Birmingham recently, which was just way over the benchmark, that not only helps you reduce the energy in the building, but it actually pulls out errors in the metering. And I think they saved about £400,000 just by discovering that. And they previously hadn't noticed. Those sorts of things are where we can help. We can also help because we design and guide the installation of plant, air conditioning plant, heating plant, all those things. And the controls of those typically aren't perfect, should we say. And they drift over time. And if we're to control the energy use in buildings, we need to help people control that and get that constantly recalibrated. We really need to help educate across a wide section of the construction industry and indeed the property industry. Now, SIBSI has been uh, a minority sport, you might say. It's a small section. We deal specifically with the energy producing equipment in buildings. Uh, up till now, that's all been about comfort. It's all been about just delivering comfortable buildings and enjoyable places to be in. Now we have to change that. And that is not a simple exercise because we have been doing calculations on the use of energy in buildings forever. But in order to change the amount of energy they use, we have to teach people how to build differently. And that's called building engineering physics. And that involves construction members, and it involves architects and surveyors. And all those people have long-standing institutions, and we need to influence them, and we need to do it positively. Renewable energy is really important in the future. And in terms of reducing emissions from buildings, it'll have a significant impact. But the first step has to be reducing the need, so reducing the demand of buildings for energy. And that process of measuring at the building scale will enable you to understand what energy you are using. And at the moment we typically describe as a society, when we talk about energy we talk about electricity. And that's not all. 
in buildings we do a great deal of uh, heating and cooling, which is in warming things up and cooling things down. And we use carbon fuel and we use electricity and gas and coal and oil. All these things are relatively carbon intensive and we have to get round other ways of doing that and that's renewables. So we need renewable heat, renewable cooling and renewable electricity. There's already a commitment to get 30% renewables in the generation mix by 2020 and that affects the way that we measure the carbon intensity of buildings. As that proportion changes over time, so the measured carbon intensity of building changes over time. So that's a long-term plan and it's shifting all the time. I think the CRC scheme is creating a change in the way they manage their assets. And in particular, I think at the moment it's focusing minds more now that the money is going direct to Treasury. Our members are trained and are high quality. That part of what we do is to ensure that the quality of their knowledge is high and they can analyse the way your energy is used in the building and then they can help you design the ways to minimise the energy use so they can help you prioritise, that's the main thing. Doing this is, is often a long-term process. Um, our own headquarters buildings we started in 2005 with a plan to reduce its carbon footprint by 60% we've reached about 55% and we've done that during, just by concentrating over time and using the opportunities to replace equipment, to replace them with the right sorts of things. So we can guide you, we can show you how it's been done and how it can be done in the future. It's also a commitment that is needed by the organisation. It's not just equipment, it needs the people to understand. The Business Channel for business class programming.